JD here, and today we've got this. This is the brand new MJX X104G, the new GPS quadcopter. Okay, let's open her up and have a little look inside. And this is what greets you on the inside. First of all, we have the manual, as well as your QR codes to get the app. The app is called the MJX GPS app. Let's have a little look at that a little bit later. Now inside here, if we tip this around, we've got some sellotape on the outside. So if I just undo the right hand side, then we should be able to flip this box open. And inside should be waiting for us the brand new quadcopter. And then on the other side then, you have that lovely transmitter. So there's the quadcopter nestled inside its polystyrene bed. Oh, that feels quite nice. Okay, let's move that to one side. Let's take everything out here. So we've got accessories in the way of propellers. We've also got accessories in the way of a screwdriver. We also have a USB charger as well as a micro USB charger as well by the feel of it. Then on the other side we have a spare battery because this is the two battery version because this does come in a battery combination of two, one or three. This is the FPV boom for our transmitter. And then the last package here, it looks like, oh they are landing sprigs by the look of it. Okay. And then on the other side, this is where our transmitter resides. So let's move all that out of the way. And then this is what we have. Right then, let's place everything so we can see it and we'll get back to a lot of it in a minute. First of all, let's have a little look at this quad and I did not expect it to be as slimline as this. First of all, let's start off with the camera. This is a 1080p HD fixed lens camera. So obviously as you can see there, it doesn't move, it is fixed lens, unfortunately, but that's okay. Hopefully we're gonna get some quite nice footage. What I am a bit concerned about, because of its particular angle, when you do have this in its maximum speed mode, and you do have you do have the quadcopter pitched flat then you are going to have this angle of attack is going to be quite aggressive so you are going to find that this is going to record the floor so hopefully we're going to find out that in slower speed modes we're going to get quite a nice video and quite a nice at quite a nice uh, motion but in order to find that out we're going to have to take it out and fly it then at the top here we got our first orientation led Working our way towards the back, you have your on and off button directly at the front this time. Then you have the standard MJX RC logo. Working our way towards the back, we have a GPS little symbol there just to remind us that this quadcopter, of course, does have GPS. Then at the back, we have this. And this particular hole is for our battery. So the battery comes in a little bag. What I'm going to do is just put this all down. Now this particular battery is a 3.8 volt, 1500 milliamp hour battery. Very, very slim line. Now to charge, this should take 150 minutes and give us a flight time of 12 minutes. Now that's not what I was expecting. I was expecting this to be quite a bit longer clicks in fits in quite nicely like that it doesn't feel as if it's just going to come open unless you push down the little button there so it actually feels really quite nice and sturdy inside there what i like about it as well is you have a very definite line now i know a lot of people don't like that they like to look they like to have it quite flush but i i prefer either a flush finish or a finish like this where you have a definite line all the way around the outside it actually looks quite nice quite striking and doesn't take away from the from the the build uh, quality or the aesthetics of the quality now that's the battery as I say 12 minutes flight hopefully we're gonna get a little bit longer out of it I'm gonna charge up both batteries and see exactly what we get so that's the one battery out of this two battery pack so therefore I'm gonna put that to one side okay now Coming back onto the quad, let's have a little look at these motors. Now these are brushed coreless motors, so these aren't brushless, they are brushed. On the underside there we have our little LED, which obviously is going to tell us exactly which way we have this facing. Normally it's one colour for the back and one colour for the front. Now there are a couple of ways you can tell which way your quadcopter is facing. One by the camera, two because the battery normally points to the back, and three because of the colour of the LEDs. Now these LED, uh, these uh, motor housings feel quite flimsy. They feel quite thin plastic. That being said, I'm sure they'll do the job. They've got a bit of aeration at the bottom here just to drag away the heat from that coreless motor. At the top, we have 145 millimeter propellers sat on top, or sat underneath rather, this little plastic acorn at the top there that just fits on top just to ensure the, the propeller doesn't come off. Now, by the look of it, it looks as if these are actually two separate entities, like the propellers are uh, separate to these little acorns. So hopefully we've got a couple of spare ones of those as well. And then of course, 
we have the symbols. We have the letter B on one side, which will be going left to right here. And then we also have the A then going left to right at, at the front here. That just lets you know exactly which way, what arms are what to put on what propellers should you need to replace them. Now, coming on to the build quality of the quad, it feels a lot sturdier than I thought it was going to be. Because this isn't MGX's premium bugs range, this is sort of the entry level GPS quadcopter range, it feels quite thin plastic, but it feels quite well put together. The lines as well are well moulded, as well as everything just fits together quite nicely. There's no cracks in the, in the plastic, no cracks in the body, and everything is moulded very, very nicely, as we've come to expect from MGX. Now if we flip this over you can see we've got a micro SD card right on the bottom there just pop one in one doesn't look as if one comes with this particular package not that much of a big deal pop it in and you'll be recording raw 1080p directly off the camera. Now as we're under here you can see we have these four holes here which is where our propeller guard uh, our, our landing springs fit in so if I can remember where they are which package because there's so many packages around here I'm just going to break these out and then we're just going to fit these very very simply once we stop flicking them everywhere. So let's get them out. There should be four in there. I can feel that there's another three in here, so I've got four in total, so I'm happy with that. Now, let's have a little look. Some of these are bent around one way, some of them are bent around the other way. So we've got a little bit of, of foam on the underneath there just to stop this quadcopter from slipping and sliding away. So what we're going to do, we're going to fit them with the kink coming towards the back, and that should just then push in quite nicely until it fits in there we are, as nice as that. Let me see. It's quite strange at the orientation I'm sat to actually see this done properly. Oh, there we go. And then once again, that one in there. They look like they're generic. It doesn't look as if you've got one side that fits in one way and the other side that fits in the other way. So it should look a little bit like that. So you've got the, 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 uh, the sprigs, which are out at about a 40 degree angle from the main body and four sides. That looks quite nice. I'm quite happy with that. And then we have our standard quadcopter shape and quadcopter ready to take to the sky okay so that's everything there looks nice i quite like the look of it you know it's not as premium it looks quite basic it looks quite sort of 1970s sci-fi and i find that really quite appealing okay let's put that to one side now let's look at everything else so we have our fpv boom in here which i'm just going to get out because the next thing we're going to look at is the transmitter and i want to be able to fit everything together now this app is called the mgx gps app you can get it from the uh from the QR code oh, in uh, in the manual on the back of it. Let's just flip that around like that. This particular FPV boom is enough to fit a phone. You won't fit a tablet in there, unfortunately, uh, but you can always make some adaptions yourself as long as they're safe to fit a tablet should you wish to. Now then, if I just get this out, these bags, right, they are recyclable bags, but I tell you what, they are half annoying to get everything out because they don't rip well enough. Oh, perfect. And as we've come to expect from MGX, this is their standard transmitter. And I'm very, very happy they've sent us this. So as you can see over on the left-hand side, let's start off down here. On and off button for your GPS. Obviously, we're going to have that on. We've got our main on and off button for the transmitter there. We've got our low and high speed modes over to the right. We've got our standard left and right analog sticks. They don't depress. There's no buttons there, but they do move around quite nicely. We've got the A and B switch over on the right hand side here which is a blanking plate that doesn't work and then we've got our switch here which is normally the acro switch for the, the mgx bugs 3 mini that doesn't work either at the top we've got automatic lift off and landing we've got unlock and lock the uh, propellers and the motors you've got automatic return to home and you've got camera mode there as well to take photos now you've got a little roller which is also blocked out on the shoulder button so there's nothing to worry about so quite literally all of your buttons that you've got to concern yourself with are all around this main face there's nothing else around here even the two buttons at the back l1 and l2 they are, are um, they're dummy buttons as well so you haven't got to worry about those so quite literally gps button your speed mode your on and off button and your four feature buttons at the top here that's all you got to worry about now these oh, come on seriously mjx me and you're gonna have to have a word mate are these i can't see yeah they're fake Fake antennas, 
there's no antenna running up through the middle of them so yeah that's really very annoying but what i'm gonna do i'm gonna leave them on as this quad cop is a bit of a premium quad i want to see how it goes but I, you may find in the in the flight video that i've actually taken these off i find them absolutely useless um, and then the next thing to do is just fit our um our fpv boom so i'm thinking it just slots into there by the look of it so once you've all connected it in slot it in until it clicks and that's it your fpv boom is then attached you can angle it however you want to with your phone inside there beautiful so that's what it looks like that's really nice i quite like the look of that and i'm glad they've sent us this transmitter because it's got these beautiful moldings in the back where your hands just fit in like a game console and it really does give you good accuracy even when you're using your thumbs or even when you are using your standard pinch maneuver or if you are using your thumbs there it gives you beautiful beautiful accuracy i really appreciate that now as for the power unit four AA batteries will power this transmitter make sure your batteries are fully charged because this transmitter does not allow usb charging of any sort there we go that looks quite nice let's put that to one side and then we just come on to a couple of other accessories which i'm going to open up in front of you here just to make sure what i said they were earlier they actually are one screwdriver and we've got a oh there we are there wasn't any micro usb cable just the one cable there for the battery that'll just charge one battery quite nicely it fits in as we've seen this before with many seamers you pull it back and you clip that into place and that's it your battery is now good enough to charge perfect and then the other battery uh, the other package then which i'm not going to open because we can see what they are they're the propellers as well as you get some screws you don't get any extra acorns off the top of them here so make sure you keep these very very safe because you need them to go on the top of your tra of your of your propellers there your spare ones should you need them so there we are so the package is actually quite nice i quite like that and for the price 79.99 i'm actually for the minute i'm quite happy with what i've got it's not too much to pay for what this is. It is a GPS bird. Uh, okay, it's not going to be the best. I mean, a couple of features about it. It's got an FPV distance of 80 to 150 metres. The RC remote control distance is 150 metres. Max fly speed is 4 to 6 metres per second. Your, uh, I've talked about the propellers, which are 145 millimetres uh, each propeller, or 14.5 centimetres. Camera is a 1080p HD camera. FPV single a signal is 5G Wi-Fi. Some features are GPS, 1080p camera, follow me mode, app waypoints, headless mode, and one key return as well. So all in all, you get quite a lot of features for a small price. All I hope, there's one thing I hope, folks, and that this flies well. But I tell you what we're going to do. We're going to go over now and see exactly how this flies. Okay, so let's set up the quad. Plug the battery in, hold on to the padlock on the transmitter and turn it on. And then click and hold onto the quadcopter until you hear one beep. Now that first beep means that the transmitter has bound onto the quadcopter. Then there's going to be another beep when the quadcopter is ready for GPS calibration. So in between there, what I'm going to do first is probably, there's the second beep. Let's go into settings. And let's see whether we can connect to a broadcasting network. Now it normally does take about 30 to 60 seconds after that double beep for it to connect. Now it's picked up the SSID, it should, there we are, bang, connected straight in, no problem at all. Right, let's go into MGX GPS. So this is the screen you're going to see. It's already on 104G, click go. Then it'll go through a couple of introductions for beginners. And that's it, aircraft is connected. Right, we've got, we've got something, good, right, perfect. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to record my screen. And make sure that is recording, beautiful. Then I'm going to calibrate this. So up at a level field and then twist it three times usually and then you should have green leds flashing make sure the camera is up and then twist the quadcopter three times again until you get red leds at the front and green leds at the back exactly that as we have so then let's pop it down and now after the calibration i've just been waiting and we've got 16 satellites and it's showing the same 16 in the app as well as on the transmitter down into the left to calibrate the gyro and then release and then we're going to try and see if we can take off so let me see normally we have take off no we have return to home on there okay fine we doesn't look as if we have no it doesn't look as if we have a takeoff option on the app so let's do it on the transmitter click once on the uh on the on the lock symbol to start the motors and then click the one key takeoff and up goes the aircraft and there we go she is up right let's have a little look at her so today we've got a five mile an hour breeze that's coming in now and again as you can see by the trees it's not very strong so what i'm going to do is i'm going to start off some video recording but i'm going to start it off from the app we have a nice little timer as well up in the top right 
that's nice. Now, for the second, we're running on GPS. If you're to turn off GPS, then altitude hold mode is going to kick in and the quad is going to move. So for now, we're going to keep it on GPS and see exactly how, how far, how, well, how, how she does, really. So for the minute, I'm just, okay, now what I'm looking at, I'm looking at the video, which is 1080p, directly through, uh, through the camera onto my smartphone, and it looks relatively good. It looks actually very good. The colour looks fantastic. It's very laggy though, that's the one thing I'm picking up because I'm moving my arm here and then it's taken a couple of seconds to relay or even maybe even 0.5 of a second to relay back to the back to the for the to the to the device. Now I know that's not my phone because my phone never gives me any trouble at all with any of my quadcopters I fly. So we're in low speed mode for the second. I just want to see how it does, just cutting through this breeze. It's nice and quiet. I mean, those brushed motors, they are coreless, so they are going to give out a bit more than your standard brushed motor. Oh, that's finding it a bit difficult. Let's shift it into high. There we are, no problem. As soon as you shift the angle of it into high, the angle of, the, of, of attack alters, and the quadcopter picks up speed quite nicely. They are really nice and quiet. Really very nice and quiet. I'm very impressed with just how quiet those motors are. Okay, let's shift it back into low and let's bring her down a little bit. There we go. Just so I can have a little look at some of these features. For the second, the flight I'm quite impressed with. It seems quite tight, the corners seem quite tight. Everything about it just seems very, very nice. Now, one thing I, I, I want to see, and I want to see what, how Follow Me works. So if I click Follow Me, you get a nice little instruction and click Yes. And then the quad, hopefully, should bind onto my smartphone and should follow me. So what are you doing? Are you, you just finding your level for a second, Quad? Let's take her up a little bit higher. Right, she moved about a bit. Now she seems to have locked onto my position. So for now, I'm just going to move around and see. No, doesn't like it. That's quite strange, doesn't like it. Okay, so let's click again. Yes, I'd like to start follow me. And let's see how far I go with it. Can I move? Oh, it is kind of trying to track me. Oh, it is, it is actually trying to track me. Come on, this way. If I just walk away a little bit, what's it going to do? It just kind of stays in the same position. It doesn't really move. Uh, so, right, okay, that's a little bit strange. Let's take it off follow me mode then. What I want to let's do is I want to try a little bit of follow me. So I'm going to click the follow me button. Um, once follow me function is working, the camera lens will keep pointed at the mobile phone to remain constant distance. The throttle altitude can be adjusted manually. Click yes. Okay. As soon as I clicked yes, it automatically turned itself around. And now it seems to be following me. It is. It's turning. It's following me. So I'm, not, I'm just going to keep my eye on my, on my tablet. It's following me perfectly. Very, very good. Wow. Okay, maybe this is the main point of this particular quadcopter. I was thinking £79 with a fixed lens, it doesn't really give you a lot of options. But if it is a follow me quadcopter, so I'm just going to stop following me. How does it write itself? It comes out of that, no problem. Let's Sorry. try orbit and we'll come back to follow me. So orbit is a point of interest. So as soon as we start, it should orbit directly around me. Uh, seeing me as a point of interest Well, it's orbiting maybe and it's orbiting. Okay, actually now the It is going out and it's kind of circling around in like a weird formation It's not circling around me or around a central point now if it's circled even if it wasn't directly next to me If it's circled around me, I'd kind of understand and like this. This is more like orbit this is what I've come to. I've come to understand with orbit from Visio, from uh, the great big whisk that we flew a couple of weeks ago, from DJI, from other quadcopters as well. It seems a bit hit and miss, although it is keeping a nice little trajectory. It does seem a little bit hit and miss because it is moving around quite a bit. But every now and again, like now, it's gonna. If I stay still, it's gonna totally see me out of frame, and it's gonna come over my head here. There we go, over my head, and then it isn't until it gets round to there that I'm going to be back in the frame. Now I'm back in the frame. See? So that's a little bit hit and miss, but still, at least we're getting some sort of function out of that. 
which is a bit better than what we had for active track. No. So, so far, what have we got? All right, okay, we've got Follow Me that doesn't tend to work on iOS. I will try it on Android and get back to you uh, on that. Uh, we've got Orbit, which works after a fashion. Well, it does work. That's me being a little bit too mean, actually. It does work. It just doesn't focus around a central point as such. It kind of just circles around you um, or just circles around in any way that it wants to. But it does perform circles. Flying wise though, it's nice. It seems very, very agile. Very light in the air. I mean, it's 189 grams. So you're under that 250 gram limit. There comes a strong breeze. And because it's in high mode, it just gets right the way around it without there being any issue. Right, what I want to try now is take it out a little way. Let's take it up a little way. Let's stop her about there. I'm going to initiate return to home and see exactly, that was a lot of movement from that then. Maybe that was a big gust of wind up as far as that. How high are we? Uh, it says 10 meters. Okay, well, I, I assume that, uh, to be honest, that seems more like 20 to me, but I'm going to initiate return to home and see now what happens. So if I click return to home, now return to home icon is illuminated on the app. It's, it's raised itself up, which is not uncommon. Now it should come back and land next to my, uh, my, my spot there which is where it took off from. So that's his first calibration point. Good, it is stopped. I didn't think it was going to then. And it should start to descend. So I'm just looking at that. Yeah, it is descending very slowly. It does seem as if it is very windy up there. It's moving around a hell of a lot. So it is descending, it's coming down. It's moving around a bit. Oh, is that battery, I wonder? What is that? Yeah, I'm guessing that's battery. And then let's go down. Now that, that is probably, <laughs> that, that's, that's bad. Right, okay, so let's see. Let's stop video recording. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Thereabouts, very inaccurately, 10 foot away from where it took off. So that's worse than the Hubson, that's worse than the Z5, that's worse than the F11 for returning back to where it took off from. Uh, now, okay, I want to try that again, but obviously it is reporting that it's got low battery, that we are seeing on the, on the, on the app that it is showing that it's got two bars. Let's see whether we can get it to take off again. Yes, we can. And let's see if I take it out. It should, LVC is kicked, has kicked in, so it should auto return to home at, at some point, I would imagine, but I don't know which point that is. If I go into the settings, then I can alter the maximum flight altitude. I can also alter the minimum, uh, maximum flight distance. I'm gonna just leave it hanging there for a second. I can alter the flight radius. Detection wise, it shows you here with four green ticks that your gyro is calibrated, barometer is calibrated, compass and GPS is calibrated. There's your flight data in there as well and your camera settings. There we are. Okay, so you've got quite a few settings there. So let's have a little look. So if I just point it, there we are. And one thing I did notice as well is that it seemed to fly backwards in return to home mode because it didn't seem to readjust itself because when it came back to me, where, which orientation am I? There we are. <laughs> when it came back to me, the camera was still pointing forward and at no point did it turn. So let, I'm gonna try this again because I've never seen that. I'm gonna just, cause we, we, we've got this, this low beep, I'm just gonna click return to home again. And then hopefully, I'm gonna get some video recording as well of it, but hopefully then it should turn around or at least if it doesn't, that's okay, I guess. But it's just, I've never seen that. Now it's in return to home and it's kind of just hanging there. Wow, what is that big noise? That must mean that you're into the second level of LVC. Because normally with MGX you have two. You have your first, and I tr always try and get them back and get them, get them, uh, get them landed in, in the first LVC. Just because I, I like safety. Um, and I don't want to be, you know, coming back before the second one hits and then it just falls from the sky. Now it's hanging there. Oh, now it's descending. There's a lot of calibration, there's a lot, a lot of thinking, sorry, that this quadcopter does. Now this looks to be a lot better. This looks to be a lot better. Come on, down you come. Whoa. 
hit the bag, that's my fault. Come on then. There we are, landed, eventually. No thanks to me and my bag. Right, okay, so let's just stop the recording there. And, oh, that's interesting. At some point when it was coming back, it said aircraft not connected. So it actually disconnected from the Wi-Fi and coming back. Probably because of that second stage LVC. So what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna stop that. Okay, folks, so what are my thoughts? Well, I wish I could say I was 100% 100% happy with with this particular quad. Um, now, let's start off very basic. The MGX Bugs range, which is what this is not, is kind of a, a premium sort of MGX range of quadcopters. Uh, I've got a hell of a lot of them. A lot of them are behind me here, and they work really, really well. Even the worst one out of all of them still works fantastically well. The features work, the quad works, the cameras are, are well, they're generally pretty bad, but they're passable. Um, now, with this particular one, what I found is the flight is beautiful. The GPS lock is generally fine. I've not had it unlock and just shoot off. And every single time I've initiated air brakes and stopped the quad, it has broke and it has actually stopped and locked itself after maybe two, three seconds. So generally, I'm happy with that. As for the features, as we saw, iOS Follow Me did not work. Follow Me on Android, though, worked beautifully. It followed me. As soon as I turned off Follow Me, the quadcopter stopped and locked itself in exactly the same position that it was in. Perfect. Orbit? Well, that was a little bit strange, but it did work after a fashion. It did circle around, although it didn't really keep its, its central point. It did move around, so the point of interest was one minute dead center and then the other minute then it was outside of outside of the uh, outside of view and then it was back in view but it did work I, I can't say that didn't work because it did um, the return to home function worked brilliantly it came back one thing I did find strange the quad didn't turn it just shot backwards so it just flew backwards at a rate of knots and then it came down the first landing was about 10 10 and a half foot away from where i took off the second landing was about a foot a foot and a half away so you know, that could be anything really but i'm pretty happy that the second one was a little bit better it's more in keeping with what we've seen from other quadcopters like the z5 the f11 and the hubson uh, now, all in all, I'm generally pretty happy with how this quadcopter is. $79.99 is pretty much what you can expect. Uh, it's pretty much a pretty good price point, and this is this is the sort of caliber quadcopter you can sort of expect for that particular price. I do want things sorted, though. I want that app sorted. It's too flaky. It's too buggy. It crashes too much. It's not stable enough. When you are needing waypoints, or when you're needing, which we're going to look at tomorrow, by the way, uh, or when you need other features, you need that app to be rock solid, so you can at least put your trust in it, so you can pinpoint exactly where you want your quad to go and execute those commands. I didn't have that luxury in this particular app. Uh, I, I thought it was very flaky on both platforms, iOS and Android. Even though it didn't crash, it did disconnect from the, the, the quadcopter quite a lot. Um, SD card, SD card worked for me, but I did have to ensure the SD card was formatted to FAT32. Uh, SD card. Now that did work for me this time. I did find that the uh, I did know SD card. Well, the SD card worked for me this time. I did uh, experiment with a couple of different file systems, and I found that the best one was FAT32. If you're XFAT or NTFS, it's not going to work for you, even on a Class 10 SD card. It just doesn't recognise the file system. FAT32 is your is your best way to go. And my SD card I used with this was a 64 gig Class 10 Samsung Evo, and I had no problem whatsoever in recording. As you saw, hit record, it recorded, stop recording, stop recording again, and once again, same on the transmitter. Hit Hit record on the transmitter just to write back to that SD card and stop it again by clicking and holding the, the, the photo button. No problem whatsoever. Uh, battery was, well, they, they said 12 minutes. I actually had a little bit over 12 minutes, so that wasn't too bad, about 13 minutes. So that's actually better than what they said. They've under-promised and they've over-delivered. I think that's fantastic. All in all, I I, I think this is a, a passable quadcopter. It's not up to the, up to the, the, the specs of the MJ, uh, MJX bugs. And it, to be perfectly honest with you, I would save your money with the 
and I would go with the MGX Bugs 3, which is still around 40, 50, 60 pound, which is cheaper than this particular quad. Okay, the Bugs 3 does not have to hold. It isn't a GPS quadcopter, but it is a good quadcopter, and it's a very, very long range quadcopter as well for what it is. Interchangeable action cams. Do you know what? You'll find it in the description should you want to see a little bit more about it. This quad, I think it's okay. It's nowhere near MGX's best at all. It's a budget range. It comes in as a budget quadcopter. And honestly, it does sit, as a, uh, in my mind, as a budget quad. No more, no less. What more can I say? That's everything. All right, my friends. Now, for the remainder of the week, we're going to be going through the features, waypoints. We're going to be looking at other aspects of this quad as well. See if my mind does change. But so far... Budget quad, budget price. Should you st should you st leave it or should you should you go with something else? Honestly, I think you should go with something else. There are other quadcopters. If you add another twenty or thirty pound to it, you can get other GPS quadcopters of a much better caliber like this, like the Z5, in my opinion. All right then, friends. Thanks ever so much for watching and listening. I've been JD. You've been fantastic as always. If you haven't already, please like and subscribe and ring that bell too. Hello and welcome to all the new subscribers. I hope you're enjoying the channel. So until next time, my friends. Happy flying.